Learning the KF-50 isn't easy. It's trying to keep the flight path you last set so you can be the solo badass flying and gunning in what's normally a two-man op. In the first eight minutes you'll learn how to fly and work with the autopilot. Stick around after that and I'll show you all the autopilot interactions, test results on the various methods and when to use which. You can see my controls here on the bottom left. Collective powers here on the left, rudder pedals, left and right at the bottom. For flight, your throttle will almost always stick to the auto position in the middle, just just touching the metal bar but not lifting it up. Full up would be for emergency power if you only have one engine, while floored would be for idle, typically at the beginning of startup. The diamond represents my psychic stick, currently pushed forward and to the left from central ground neutral position. Here you can see me pull back on my physical stick, which then pulls back on the in-game stick, almost to the central position. Slightly forward, then you're likely trimmed for a hovering position without flying backwards. More forwards would be for nose down forward flight, and due to the flight dynamics of your axial rotors, you need to bank slightly to the left to remain level at this kind of speed. These five autopilot channel buttons will control and dampen your black shark. They work in conjunction with autopilot modes, which take over more overtly from you in directing your course. While it's simplistic, pitch hold affects your cyclics up down, bank hold your cyclics left and right, and heading hold your rudder pedals left and right. Mostly you'll fly with these three autopilot channels on. To fly the black shark, Hold down your trim button, then begin moving your cyclic and rudder pedals in a coordinated turn. And once you stabilize on your new heading and all the inertial effects have taken place and your slip balls in the desired position, then release trim and immediately release your stick. You're holding trim throughout your entire maneuver. Holding trim prevents the autopilot correcting your pitch, bank and heading hold while you're doing it. If you drop your collective, the black shark will naturally nose down. If you now hold trim without any other input, the nose down will exaggerate as the autopilot is no longer fighting to keep your pitch level as you had it before. The instant you release trim, you're telling the black shark to center your in-game stick as the new neutral and telling the bank, pitch and heading autopilot channels to maintain those parameters at that instant the best it can. If you're still in a turn when you release trim, your black shark will attempt to return to the parameters that you had just overshot. Your autopilot channels have the ability to affect your controls about 20% and they balance with one another. So trimming while in a strong bank will have bank hold, override, heading hold and keep you in a stable orbit rather than a straight line. Now since most gaming hardware doesn't have force feedback, keeping your physical stick in the same centered position as your in-game KA50, Eagle Dynamics have made a few workarounds. You access these by going to the main menu, Options, Special tab, and the KA50. Default requires you to release the stick within 0.5 seconds after releasing trim, as at that instant, your autopilot starts correcting to the new parameters at the moment you released it for pitch, bank, and heading hold. This also sets your new in-game neutral stick position from which it'll move your stick in the future. With central trimmer mode, your trim only applies after you release the trim once your stick recenters. After you release trim, your stick inputs will be completely ignored. You can swivel around 360 degrees and it'll ignore you until your stick centers, at which point it'll apply your new in-game cyclic position and autopilot parameters at the time you release the trim button. You don't need to release the stick as quickly after trimming, but of course it may drift slightly off course when you release trim, so if you wait too long, you may still buck as your autopilot restores the conditions as of when you release trim. I've heard of dead zone issues with this mode. If your HOTAS has large dead zones, especially combined with rudder trim special option, then it may not realize that you've recentered your controls and may continue releasing your inputs. So you need to see if this works with your HOTAS setup. The third setting is for force feedback sticks, where the physical stick holds the deflection as well as the in-game one. But you lucky few of you that have that really don't need my help. By default, your trim does not lock your rudder. If you then trim with a strong rudder, gradually ease up on the rudder as the KA-50 can't anticipate you suddenly releasing it. From what I understand from the real Black Shark, trim eases pressure on the pedals, but your feet will still remain in your relative position so you can feel the rudder setting. Assuming you don't have the dampening force feedback pedals linked to your physical rig's trim, you'll need to weigh the convenience of not needing to hold trim versus needing to remember your rudder trim setting or looking at the control indicator in the bottom left. The rest of the tests I've done with a springed HOTAS, default trim, and rudder not trimming, my personal preferences. 
If you move the Psychic without holding Trim and tap Trim at the end, your healer will move fast enough, but near the end of your maneuver when you ease up on the stick, you'll struggle to get stable as the autopilot will start correcting back the last Trim parameters. Also, once you tap Trim, it'll not be as exact a setting as it would have been if you held Trim throughout the entire maneuver. You remove the rudder and Psychic without holding Trim, and as I try and settle a new level heading, I need a lot of rudder to fight the heading hold, and when I tap Trim, it's not chasing that level of flight like I thought I had. Force feedback users might experience the physical stick lightening the resistance when they tap trim, and that's lurch a little, so in general for all sticks and trim settings, I'd recommend holding trim throughout the maneuvers and not trying to replicate the tap trim thing that apparently real K50 pilots could do with however those mechanics and those sticks work. The altitude hold channel button tells the black truck to maintain your present barometric or radar altitude, depending on this setting. It records your desired altitude at the moment you switch on alt hold or when you release the collective brake. Releasing trim button does not set the altitude hold like it does with pitch, bank or heading and holding trim doesn't fully suppress the altitude hold although you can move pretty much freely. Roughly put, it has limited authority of your collective power and balances with the other channels so you need to check that your vertical velocity should be staying near zero for altitude hold to have enough control and level it out completely. Flicking it on when you shoot past zero won't work. It's only polishing from your piloting. Our alt will appear above you if you set the radar altimeter for keeping your altitude, although it will use barometric if you're above 300 meters above ground level regardless of setting. Jagged terrains and buildings will jumble your radar altitude, but if you're not moving too fast or over too sharp inclines, it will actually allow a decently trimmed black shark to fly safely at 3 meters above ground for ages with no input. To hover, nose up, pulling back cyclic, simultaneously dropping collective power if you don't want to climb. Approaching 50 km per armor, you'll lose effective translational lift, so increase collective again so you don't lose altitude. If your doppler is ready and your HUD's showing navigation, at 50 kph, a vector line appears showing the current direction you're drifting in. You want to pull cyclic in the opposite direction. Just below the 10 degree pitch line should be getting to hover. You need to bank or pitch into the wind to counter it. The wind will affect you differently at different angles, so a perfect hover facing the wind will misbehave when you ride at 90 degrees. Holding rudder or rudder trim might also be useful for preventing spinning in the wind. If you're new to the black truck, stop here and practice. Hold trim, maneuver, release trim. Seriously, that is all you need to master flight in the black truck. Maybe use altitude hold. Get a feel of how it responds on yours in the wind or in a side slip. How collective power influences pitch. When you lose coordinated flight and wobble around. How to use rudder with the cyclic. How slow rudder is at 250 kph and how much power you need to hover at 3000 meters. Note, my turns are exaggerated for demonstration. Don't be so rough if you're starting out. Next, I'll show more complex autopilot modes in the order I believe you should learn them. Now the KF-50 has an enduring drug called Flight Director. See, Flight Director takes away the automated corrections from the other four autopilot channels, but keeps the dampening on your inputs. I'll show you this later, but while you're moving the cyclic stick, it's exactly the same as holding trim while you maneuver. It just relieves carpal tunnel as you don't need to hold the trim button anymore the whole time. You may be thinking, that's perfect. This is like flying the UE. I just move my stick and it does its thing. But after you leave the stick, it's a little floaty. So now I'll tap trim at the end, which works in Flight Director, unlike all trim. And you'll see it's a little more steady when I leave the stick. But it's still more floaty and doesn't keep your attitude as sharply as whole trim does. I tend not to use Flight Director, primarily because it's less stable once I've completed my maneuver and take my hand off the stick. Yeah, it's a little harder to hover and it doesn't keep altitude hold channel as strictly. Probably because of the imprecision, the bank and pitch. Uh, similar to if you were to have altitude hold on while holding down trim and keeping trim depressed. Unlike holding trim, if you had radar altitude set, Flight Director switches you back to barometric while it's on. 
Flight Director nullifies some of your autopilot modes I'll discuss next. I've mapped Flight Director to the right of my stick, so like the real KF-50, I'll have to juggle grabbing the sidekick with my left hand, then pressing FD with my right hand, then switching hands back awkwardly. Uh, I'm not going through your navigation, but Flight Director also changes your HUD, either guiding back to your selected PVI 800 steer point, otherwise your trim position and desired altitude with altitude hold on. Now, I do use Flight Director from constantly moving the sidekick over a short period of time, maybe dodging through small cannons or doing acrobatic or loosely milling around the area without a set direction or intent. Now I've described the autopilot channels and trimming. Next up is the autopilot modes, which take over control more overtly. Auto turn on target, route mode, and hover mode. To get the expected results, keep the three core autopilot channels on, as this is what they affect to get their results. Now there is a pecking order to them. Hold trim, or having flight director on, will nullify route mode and auto turns effect, even while the lights are up. Holding trim nullifies hover mode and will set a new hover point when you release it. Flight director works with hover mode, but might be a little less precise. Auto turn overrides root mode. Root mode prevents hover mode from being activated and it turns it off if it was activated. Outside of remembering which autopilot modes are on and affecting your flight, note once you come out of them, they would have changed your heading all direction and they often don't change your heading diamond of your last trim. So while you still see your former trim position, the black truck won't be following it anymore. After exiting any of those autopilot modes, it's best to manually pilot and trim. Switching on auto turn to target sets your heading hold trim to the uncaged fall targeting reticule and that's gets you turning your nose towards it. On target's far off board sight, its fast turns will overshoot the target, so slow it down appropriately with rudder when nearing the target. You can pilot with this mode by the helmet mounted sight holding down uncaged fall as you look around, but it's awkward. Resetting your schwal will switch it off, which keeps this new heading, but still shows the diamond on your former trim position. It doesn't compensate for your Vicar launch reticule hopping left and right off center based on which launcher will fire next. It isn't great instability in wind and excessive side slip. It has limited authority and can't override stronger bank angles to the point that sometimes it won't even turn in the direction. And it's just not that accurate. Point is, you usually need rudder to get your shots dead on if need be. Auto turn will offload some of your mental load pointing in the right direction, but if you have situational awareness and finesse with your rudder, you could just use manual rudder all the way. Root mode has three different ways of operating. Following a PVI 800 steer point, a dead link ingress target, or route without task. With the PVI 800 steer point, switching on root mode automatically sets your heading hold target to that steer point, banking up to 15 degrees to get you to that point or follow the track, depending on the DHDT toggle. If you switch off root mode, your heading will still be trimmed and your heading hold will still try to maintain that direction-ish. If your PVI 800 is off, normally the diamond in the HUD heading tape shows your trimmed heading. However, your diamond will be set to the current direction the instant you disengage the PVI 800, even though you're okay 50 might be following another heading. If you don't want to get confused with this, trim manually after exiting this mode. Auto turn overrides root mode. You can also use root mode to head towards the safe dead link target. Either one you laser lock, then save, and reselect like I'm doing here, or one another black shark wingman sent you. Choose your target, then push ingress, and finally engage root mode. This overrides root mode, heading towards the selected PVI 800 waypoint. With the dead link selected and ingress on like above, I can do pretty much the same thing by engaging shrawl now, and turning auto turn on target on. Auto turn overrides root mode. So if I uncatch the shrawl, where the helmet mounted side is pointing, that now becomes which follows the target area and I'll head towards that now until I switch off auto turn and then it goes back to root mode chasing a dead link ingress target. In this example I have three targets in the PVI 800 along with some hypothetical AA target and a building saved in the dead link. Select the target point on the PVI 800. Trying to select the AA or building dead link targets momentarily just change the target point icon but won't switch to those targets. To switch root mode to going to the AA target I need to press the PVI 800 target point button again to deselect it. Then I can select dead link targets again and ingress to them using root mode. To recap, Flight Director overrides auto turn on target, which always overrides root mode. 
The PBI 800 having a target point selected overrides anything in the day link, which otherwise the day link overrides a waypoint or airfield on the PBI 800. And finally, if none of those conditions are true, you can try and engage root without task. So if you have nothing selected in the PVI 800, like here I disengage the waypoint, and you're not ingressing on a day link target, then flicking on root mode automatically sets a new heading at that point and tries to level you out. If you now switch on PVI 800 steer points for day link ingress, it'll chase that instead. I would typically tap trim just before switching off this route without task mode, just to keep that level, otherwise you might resume some previous crazy bank you had. Flight Director usually just makes this leveling effect a little less precise, and if you're in a safe space you could even fly with route without task journey. Just hold trim to maneuver, get reasonably leveled out, no longer banking, and then ever do the final leveling as you focus on navigation or other duties. This probably isn't great for practice, and trim keeping a bank is probably more useful in combat situations. Note that Root Without Task does not show the on route light, but will change the left scale of the HUD. Root mode is good for fixing a drink, handling some comms and scanning the area ahead. Of course, it's only as safe as the route you have planned, so generally use it outside of combat. It's better if you somewhat trimmed out level before engaging it, and it can be overridden at any point in time by just holding down trim and starting to maneuver. If you're under 20 kph in any heading, you can activate hover mode. This trims your heading to that current direction and switches on altitude hold. It also tries returning it the coordinates where you engaged it, shown by the square on the HUD and how far off center it is from the datum in the center on your HUD. Like all autopilot channels and modes, it only has limited authority, so an excessive bank won't allow it to return to that point. If you're not pressed into needing to hover immediately, hold trim and get the vector line to almost disappear and stay small before trimming and engaging hover mode. Remember as with any helo, if the line's decreasing, it'll swing over to the other side and grow again. You have to preempt counter steering and overcorrection to get into a stable hover. The more wind or unstable your hover trim was, and if you climb or fall more than 2 meters a second, hover mode will buck around. Another technique can be to activate hover mode first once your speed in all directions is low, then release trim once your nose drops to the horizon. Either way works. Disengaging hover mode will not switch off altitude hold. Hold trim will override hover mode's influence and when you release trim, it will set a new position for hover mode to maintain. So if you're not in a new hover state and hover mode's still on, you'll buck around as it sets the new hover position and tries returning to that point you just flew past. Like root mode and order turn, hover mode set to heading as at the moment you engaged it, but it doesn't affect your heading diamond, which, if your PVI 800 is off, still shows the position that you last trimmed it in. Below 4 meters above ground, hover mode will disengage your main three autopilot channels, causing his buttons to flicker and kick you out of hover, and force you to reconsider life. When you manually switch these channels back on, your K50 will return to where you last trimmed or engaged your hover mode. Also note, that if you do a rapid startup, when you take off your Doppler missile will be getting ready. You'll know it's ready when you get ground speed indications top left on your HUD, and if you're 50 kph or less, the vector line will appear leading into your data. If you try to engage hover mode before this time, it'll kick off your three main autopilot channels immediately, just as if you descended beneath 4 meters. I couldn't find any text in this, but from the six experiments, it seems it's about exactly 2 minutes 30 seconds after the K041 switch is on, along with at least one generator. So on rapid startups, this might be 1 or 2 minutes after takeoff only, and if you're using auto start, this seems to be either the 5 minutes 21 mark after pressing auto start. I do use hover mode often. Sometimes you may want to take a shot before attaining a good enough hover for the hover mode not to buck, or I need to hover lower than 4 meters. In these cases, a little drift in your hover is fine, as long as you're not masking your target, crashing into terrain, or flying into a new enemy. Also, if there's too much wind, it may just be too hard to maintain a stable hover, in which case sometimes it's just easier not to have the hover mode buck you around unexpectedly, and just hover without it. If you're just doing a hover check, it's easiest to do so facing the wind, where you can just rely on straight pitch to correct for the wind. Now, if hover mode is on, the root mode switch can be held on to descend safely at 2 meters a second, stopping you at 4 meters while you're in hover mode with radar altitude hold. Hover and R alt indicators will be replaced with the scent while you do this and reappear when you release it. 
I usually can control my collective carefully, but if you're focusing on other tasks like targeting, this can be useful. Like everything else is limited authority, so with high collective power, you can actually climb while holding the scent. And if you don't already have too low power with altitude hold to keep you afloat, then the scent mode will stop you before hover mode kicks out your three autopilot channels. Do you feel you're expecting more from 4,400 horsepower? Did you want more Airwolf? If he has to answer these questions, turn on your emergency autopilot disengage, probably map to your HOTAS, and get ready to dance. There's no stabilization, there's no dampening. The shark won't get back to trim position, and trim does nothing until you turn the AP channels back on. In this state, you are crazy nimble and crazy out of control. With this great speed comes insanely high risk, you overspeed your rotors or an especially nose up right turns, rotor intersections. Unless you know your black shark, you're also likely to get sloppy movements that bleed off airspeed or rock you around instead of smooth, precise motion. If I'm not messing around with crazy acrobatics, or radically need to change course and get speed to avoid a missile, I'll stay clear of this mode while flying. It prevents other autopilot modes from operating and it's constant work to hover like this. On the flip side, if you take damage and see these buttons flickering, your autopilot's been knocked out. So maybe it's worth practicing this to handle the kind of battle damage. It's especially taxing though, as the craft won't stabilize easy. So it's constant work and constant wobbling. Note, with all the engine's power, the Black Shark can be very nimble, even while fully loaded. On the real K50, when you grab the collective, you naturally clamp down the collective brake, which unlocks it from accidental movement. Since your typical gaming throttles won't have this, Eagle Dynamics made it, you can just move the collective. So now it only sets the altitude holds desired height. If you do bind it, you push down your collective brake, move your collective, and once you settle on a new stable altitude, releasing a collective brake will set the new height for your altitude hold to maintain. The next topics don't need any demonstration to explain them, so instead I'll show tests I did in the autopilot channels, methods, and trim. I did most of the extreme saturation hair trigger curves, then videoting, clamped the first movement in the controls and indicator until a runway or altitude depending on the test. There are consistent turns between tests, not the fastest or useful in combat to keep altitude and speed. The numbers are in frames which are 29.97th of a second each, so a 10 frame difference is a third of a second which might not matter in a 9 second maneuver. No trim means just moving the cyclic without touching trim or flight director. Hull trim is exactly that without flight director. FD means flight director was on, ignoring trim. And no AP means the three main autopilot channels were off. I'll share summaries and conclusions of these numbers later, so you don't need to focus on them while I cover the topics. Disabling only heading hold of the three main autopilot channels will speed your rudder. Pitch and bank will maintain your course somewhat, but inaccuracies in the flight and wind will start pushing you off. Heading hold does set the new heading to follow the instant you switch it on, like altitude hold. It can be useful for instable harbor, where tapping trim in an oscillation might unbalance you. Just disable heading hold, ride around with increased speed, then put heading hold back on, which will set the autopilot's new desired heading. A good alternative to our auto turn if you can take your hand off the cyclic or have the channel button mapped within reach. Disabling only pitch hold will dangerously speed up your nose up and down. Maybe you'd have this off if you were cruising in a straight line on nap of the earth and had to rapidly hop over power lines while maintaining dampened flight otherwise. Disabling pitch hold can make you porpoise though. On the other hand, disabling bank hold only makes you roll around like an overfed seal. I can't see much use in doing this. If you want agility, just disable all channels. Pitch and bank hold do not set parameters to follow when you turn them back on, like heading and altitude hold. You need to trim to set them. The real K50 doesn't have a trim reset button, but you can map one. I never use this, but if you want, put in your controls indicator first and preempt the jarring effect releasing these controls would have. Ideally, you only do this on ground. According to the manual, the Black Shark also has a special mode, which automatically stabilizes the craft when firing rockets or the cannon. But in banking run a test, I'm not sure I felt any differences in the flight other than the recoil. If there is an effect, it's subtle. You'll see in the 250 kph test that the cyclic is trimmed so far forward, pulling fully back to loop just goes back to center. 
If you don't have a force feedback stick, then you'll need to trim halfway through such a maneuver to do a 180 in your control input. Tapping trim with default trim option will lurch and likely clip your rotors. Since doing a full 180 is very dangerous, this is rarely an issue for your controls. Other common issues you may experience is that you keep spinning. Check if you left root mode or auto turn on. If you have the special option to trim rudder, check your rudder isn't trimmed into a spin. Wind can cause issues, weather banning you a little more when in harbor than in forward flight, and the limited autopilot authority failing you to get you stable. In these cases, just retrim manually. It's a helo. It's unstable, and the autopilots aren't perfectly accurate, nor have full authority. Finally, all your controls are linked. Dumping collective likely pitches you down. Collective power can influence your maneuverability. Full rider will start you banking, etc. Many smooth moves require inputs from cyclic, pedals, and collective at various points in your maneuver. Conclusions from the test, hold trim and flight director are pretty much identical on turn and pitch rates and only differ when you release the stick. Having all autopilot channels or select ones influencing a maneuver in the rear vent, your maneuver doesn't affect all controls, it is more agile, but of course you pay for that with lack of dampening, likelihood of killing yourself, and your autopilot modes won't work. Just using cyclic without trim isn't slower if you're doing max deflection turn, but it's unnecessary loss of stability for no benefit once you want to level out and trim. From when you start inputs to when the black truck responds in a meaningful way is the same across all modes, so whatever electrical, mechanical differences there may or may not be in the real helo, in the sim, they're identical. Gear down has a subtle effect in rudder turns, but not much in bank rudder turns, climbs, or loops. Gear is a more pronounced effect at 250 kph, but that said, your gear shouldn't be out at 250 kph, but do take this as an indication of the effect at speed. As all tests are done with only Vickers, adding rockets, called fully loaded here, similarly slows down rudder turns, loops, and climbing, but no major effect on banking turns. Going fast slows down your bank and especially rudder turns, but significantly speeds up climbing with the collective. The black chalk tends to turn into the wind. So you won't be able to side slip a funnel the more you go to 100 kph. Increasing collective power to max did speed up turns, while dropping it to idle significantly delayed turns. You may need a specific altitude, climb, or descent rate, along with maintaining decent RPM and not burning out your engine, will also affect your collective power choice. I can't vouch that every air maneuver benefits from increased collective though, as in theory, the blades have only so much pitch to give at any given moment. They're not conclusive and fallible tests for dogfighting another K50, but purely answers to simple questions like which mode turns faster, reacts faster to your inputs, does gear or full loadout slow you down in a meaningful way, what difference does collective power make at extremes? In that regard, I don't think I need to fill in any more blanks, but I've answered my questions on things that would affect my choice and how I do my piloting. I've tested pretty much everything I've taught in this video. It's not just a quick take from a manual or a 2009 forum link, so it should be accurate for a while. If I become aware of a mistake or an update that significantly changed something, time willing, I'll make an update at the top of the description below. So in summary, hold trim gives control and precision and you don't have to disable it to use autopilot modes. If you want stable harbor, this method is easier. Start with hold trim, then figure out which mode or method gives you the balance and precision, agility, and lightening your piloting burden you need for the situation. If the trim and autopilot still didn't make sense, check out Frugalsum, Pickin' That Banjo, and Snuggle Ferry. Chasma TV also shows hovering and flight dynamics near hostile areas. In the third video, I'll revisit the flight dynamics, or rather how your flying can break the calm off with ice, dust, overheating, high or low RPM, rotor intersections, or all the fun ways you can kill yourself outside of combat. But next, I'd like to cover the art of not being seen while getting past the fiddly slewing and acquiring a target before you get launched at. This is Falk, and I hope this video has shed some light on all the optional flight modes and features, and most importantly, helps you enjoy your Black Shock. Cheers.